Good evening, my name is Aaron Tate, and the topic of my biographical presentation is going to be that of Thomas Aquinas. Now, Thomas Aquinas was born in 1225 AD, and he died in 1274 AD. In these 49 short years, Thomas Aquinas influenced the medieval church in substantial ways in both theological and philosophical ideas. Now, my presentation will be split into four main parts. First being a biographical overview, so a short overview of the life and education of Thomas Aquinas. The second is going to be the major contributions, so more of the thoughts, ideas, and works, literary and intellectual, of Thomas Aquinas. Third is going to be the main antagonists or the main competitors intellectually and liter literally in the uh, medieval time of Thomas Aquinas. And then fourth is going to be more of a biography. It's going to be the sources of how I got the information for this presentation. Now to start my first category, which is going to be a short overview, a, bi a biological overview, a biographical overview of Thomas Aquinas's life. Now, Thomas Aquinas was born in 1225 AD to a man called Landif of Aquino. He was the Count of Aquino in Sicily. Uh, and he was a nephew to Sinbald, who was the abbot of the Benedictine monastery at Monte Cassio. That's important to note because a lot of Thomas's education was were intertwined with his family. Later, his decision to join the Dominican order of priests didn't rub his family very well, but we'll get that to that in a, in a little bit. But he started his formal education at the age of five at the monastery at Monte Cassio. And after the Franciscans, I believe, Franciscans, after the monks were dispelled, after the monks were kicked out of Monte Cassio, he moved to Naples and he continued his education at the university called Studio Generale in Naples, which was founded by Frederick II. So after his studious attempts at the university in Naples, he decided to join the Dominican order of priests and his family did not like this. They didn't, didn't take this kindly to him. Because of this, he, the Dominican priests actually moved him both to Rome and Paris, trying to evade his family of dissuading Thomas Aquinas from joining the order. Uh, even though he moved so many times, his family still ended up kidnapping him um, and holding him hostage for 15 months back at Aquino. So after he joins the Dominican order in 1244, now um, he decides to continue his intellectual career and study abroad. So as he's studying abroad, he, go he goes to Paris and continues his study and he comes under the influence of Albert the Great, also known, uh, his name is Albert Magnus. Now, Albert Magnus was a great natural uh, scientist. He wasn't in the realm of theology or philosophy. Nevertheless, he introduced Thomas Aquinas to the most influential philosopher in his career, and that is Aristotle. So a lot of his theological and philosophical arguments were based on Aristotelian philosophy, ethics, and so on. So he followed him to Cologne. Uh, Thomas followed Albert to Cologne in 1248. And then later, after he studied under him, he went back. Thomas went back and became a lecturer at Paris from 1252 to 1259 AD. And then later, after that, he became a theologian in the, scratch that, um, he received a Master of Theology in 1256 in Paris um, and received a letter of recommendation 
from Pope Alexander IV, um, from a chancellor at Notre Dame. So after that, he became a theologian in the papal court from 1259 to 1268. Now, this is most likely the most influential time in, in Thomas Aquinas's life. This is the time where most of his works were written or formulated and most of his arguments for both the faith, doctrines of God were formulated. After this, he returned to Paris and Notre Dame and that's where he remained for the rest of the duration of his life from 1268 to 1274. So that concludes the biographical overview. Now to move into the major contributions of Thomas Aquinas to the medieval church, it, it's a really long list. So Thomas Aquinas is attributed the father of scholasticism and theology. Now, Thomas Aquinas's works both started, most likely started in his uh, philosophical arena where he really dabbled with a lot of Aristotelian philosophy and this uh, influenced everything of, of Thomas Aquinas's uh, thoughts and processes. His most, um, his most influential work, uh, without a doubt, is his Summa Theologica. In his Summa Theologica, he discusses epistemology, ethics, philosophy, psychology, and theological uh, topics. It ranges from the, uh, the, the doctrine of creation, the goal of humanity, the doctrines of God, the Trinity, pre, the prima causa, the first cause, the divine uh, revelation and natural theology. But one thing to note first about the theological impact of Thomas Aquinas is his natural theology. He was very much like Aristotle in that uh, things can be known. So a thing besides a, a thing can be known, something can be distinguished as a cause rather than a random effect, a random accident. And Thomas Aquinas mated this with theology and anybody who is, is not familiar with natural theology, natural theology is the study of what can be known about God in creation. Thomas Aquinas argued that all of creation, as in Psalm 19, or Proverbs 19, one is the creation displays the glory of God. Uh, and on natural revelation, things that can be known about God, you can base divine revelation, things that God reveals about himself to creation. In this aspect, Thomas Aquinas was the first theologian, first major theologian to have a view that God can be reasoned to. This is a great difference from his diff, uh, major counterparts, such as Boniface, but we're getting that, to that later. Uh, but besides his uh, many list of theological uh, contributions to uh, the church, he also wrote a few commentaries on Aristotle's works, uh, the, most in, the most influential being On the Soul, the Nietzschean ethics and metaphysics. Uh, Thomas Aquinas's view of creation is 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 biblical. Uh, so that God was the first cause, the prima causa. That things that ha have come into being had to have been made. So things with a cause had to have a cause. Um, he believed in uh, orthodox Christian doctrines, such as the uh, doctrine of creation, the doctrine of the Trinity. And um, he was a proponent of the goal, chief goal of humanity is to glorify God. Now to move on to his rivals. So his main rivals were a Boniface. Or, or not Boniface, Bonaventure or Giovanni de 
Giovanni di Fittizzani. Fin Fintanza. Fintanza. Giovanni di Fintanza, who lived from 1217 to 1274. Now, Bonaventure, uh, similar to Thomas Aquinas, was a professor in Paris until 1257, which when, which was when he was elected minister, uh, minister general of the Franciscan order in Paris. Now, instead of being a Aristotelian persuasion, Bonaventure was of the Augustinian tradition. So the Augustinian tradition focused on the heart of theology instead of the mind of theology. So his most important and most influential work was the mind's journey to God, which focuses mostly on the doctrine of divine illumination. So the doctrine of divine illumination kind of flies in the face with Thomas Aquinas' natural theology, that the main factor of knowledge of God is God's illuminating himself in more of a specific revelation to a person instead of a general revelation to a person. Now, this seems like more of a dispute than it really was, because both held to the view of the canonicity of the Bible. So the Bible was completely necessary to know things about God. It's just the order in which that was achieved. So Thomas Aquinas placed divine revelation on top of natural revelation. Boniface focused on divine revelation in the heart rather than natural theology first. Um, also, Bonaventure stressed mainly the study of the Bible. So instead of having more of a classical education and a well-rounded, well-thought-out education covering numerous different fields, such as science and metaphysics and ethics and geometry and astronomy, all these things that uh, Thomas Aquinas focused on, Bonaventure focused on the heart of theology and the heart of a soul. Uh, that does not mean Bonaventure did not was not educated. He had a excellent education. Bonaventure received the doctorate of theology in Paris under Alexander of Hales, and also achieved academic stature in his writings of the Bre Breviloquium. 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 To support his views of theology, he quotes, The whole scripture is the heart of God, the mouth of God, the tongue of God, and the pen of God. So Bonaventure focused mainly on the Bible in his pursuit of knowledge and theology. Now to move on to the sources and where I got this information. So many, 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 many people have written on Thomas Aquinas, and there are great books that are both written biographically and on his works. All of his works are published, and uh, I used uh, the Church History book, The Christ of the Reformation by Everett Ferguson. It's a great book. Uh, it's what we've had for assigned reading, so I definitely use that to my advantage. It's written in a way that is easy to understand. Um, I also used uh, Wikipedia. Now, I didn't use it as a direct source, but uh, if you scroll down to the very bottom of the page, it cites numerous, in, in this case, this presentation, uh, or in this article, there's over 150 different quotes from where it, where it actually quoted from. So a lot of it were first sent, first uh, sources. Uh, so that was really, really well. So many different, which included a biography from Alvin, Lives of Saints, Alvin Butler, which is a great book. 
I also used an entry called Thomas Aquinas from the Catholic Encyclopedia of 1913. So those were those three were basically the the sum of my uh, biographical extent. I also used some of Thomas Aquinas's actual works, so his Summa Theologica, and so on and so forth. So thank you for listening, and I hope you have a God-blessed day.